Have you ever felt lonely while being surrounded by people? Have you ever wished someone would truly see you and make you feel loved? Have you ever felt an emptiness that makes you feel incomplete, purposeless, as if you are always lacking something? Have you tried to fill the void time and again, only to find out it feels even bigger than before? If you do, you are not the only one. Three out of five Americans feel the way you do, and one out of three women are actually more afraid of loneliness than cancer. I am Carla Martinez, and I'm here to dare you to find out what the void is made out of, to stop surviving and start living a purposeful life by understanding that loneliness has never been anything more than a very well-crafted life. So please, subscribe to our channel and join me. Let's talk about mental health. There's nothing more powerful in the world than an idea. And perhaps you will find it a little bit hard at first to grasp, but I'm here to tell you that loneliness is not real. It doesn't even exist. You may be looking at me like I'm a crazy person, like I actually lost it. I have talked about anxiety and I have talked about like how we shouldn't resist our emotions, but loneliness is something different. Loneliness is an idea, a really powerful idea. An idea that in fact has moved humanity for many, many, many years and most of us don't even know it. But have you ever felt that sensation? I'm sure you probably experimented at one time. In fact, when was the first time you experienced that little void? Do you know what void I'm talking about? I felt the void for most of my life and I googled and I tried to find information about the void <laughs> and nobody talks about the void but the void is there. So actually loneliness and the void they are so so intertwined. they are so interdependent. The void is nothing more but an emptiness of ourselves and here is where, uh, here is where loneliness comes to existence because you see loneliness is not a thing Loneliness is not like light. Light is a thing. Light is something. But darkness is not anything. Darkness is just the absence of light. Just like cold is just the absence of heat. Loneliness is not something real. Loneliness is myth. And the reason why this myth is so powerful is because we all have believed it. Loneliness is in fact just the absence of yourself. And you may think like, what is she talking about? Well, let me tell you about an experiment that's actually really famous and I'm just going to drop the link uh, below. And there was an experiment made where they put like a classroom and there was a professor and you know, people knew that they were coming to an experiment. But what they didn't know, what the person didn't know is what, that he was the only person in the experiment, everyone else was part of the planning, you know. So he comes in or she comes in and there's this, you know, professor or something and he starts asking really simple questions like, is this glass transparent? Well, it was something like that with, with lengths of lines. So he would show a shorter line and a longer line. And let's say the, let's say the longer, the shorter line is A and the longer line is B. So he said, which line is longer? And Everybody in the room were trained to say that the shorter line was longer. So he said, please lift your hand if you think A is longer, which was the shorter. And everybody in the room, because they were part of the experiment, they lift their hands. The one person who didn't know about what the experiment was about, the very interesting thing is that they started being really uncomfortable. And when they see that people start lifting their hands, they're like, what? Why? Um, and then the professor asks, so who thinks B is longer? Clearly the person knows, knows that B is longer, but when nobody raises their hand, the professor is like, can you please raise your hand if you believe that, if you, if you know that B is longer? Then the amazing thing is that that study found that most people, most people didn't dare to raise their hands. In fact, when the professor asked, do you think A or B is longer? they would go for the light. If everybody chose A, even if it was not true, they would just feel so uncomfortable about it that they would just lift their hands. 
with what everybody else called the truth. The amazing truth about this, and I don't know if you're grasping it, but this is powerful. This is powerful. What that amazing, amazing experiment reveals about you and about me is actually the root, one of the roots of our suffering as humans, of our biggest suffering. It's actually one of the roots of the void. It's actually one of the roots of loneliness. And it actually is one of the roots of a lot of people's depression because there's different kinds of depression but so i'm going to talk just about one kind of depression so what that study showed about me and about you is that most of us we are more than willing to trade truth and reality over not being alone and here i come back to that story of plato and the middle of the garden that i keep coming back to the thing is that, yes, we are in the cavern, yes, we are in the cave, yes, we are sitting and we're watching the world, and in the world we're only watching nothing but shadows. We know nothing is real. We have this sensation that everything around us is fabricated. That's what I call the Matrix, what the movie Matrix is about. So we are here in this cave and we're sitting just watching nothing, nothing but shadows. But the thing about it is, at least here, we are not alone. And that, that is so important and so powerful. Because we humans are so afraid of loneliness that we're willing, most of us, are willing to live a life just as long as we are not lonely. Because we are afraid. But I'm here to tell you that loneliness is not even real. Just like I told you the example about light and darkness. Loneliness, all of these, is an absence of yourself. But here is a powerful thing. I have news for you. And this is why I say loneliness is a myth. Because it can, this is, a, this is so powerful. It cannot exist outside the matrix. You see, in order to live, in order to survive, loneliness needs the matrix. That's the oxygen it brings. So if you step out of the matrix, it means if you look inside you, if you look at yourself, who you really are, if you talk to yourself, if you listen to yourself, then loneliness cannot exist. But the thing is, we've been so trained, we've been so indoctrinated, we are so used to believing, to this truth, to, this, to these thoughts that they told us, to these lies that they sold us, that, we, that you are not enough on your own. So since we're little, since we're tiny, they tell us, oh, but one day you're going to find the love of your life and you're going to marry and you're going to be so happy. And we just live looking for that day. And somehow in this society, it is like we as humans, we are so dehumanized that we alone don't believe that our own beliefs about ourselves are enough to validate who we really are and how we feel. So we keep waiting all our life to meet this one person who will make us happy. This one person who will give it sense, who will give our life sense and purpose. And this one person who will make us feel like we are actually worth it. And that's all part of the matrix. And we don't realize, but while we are sitting here in the cave, just looking at shadows, that's what the cave is made of. What is the matrix? What is the cave made of? Of these beliefs. These beliefs that we have, that you are not enough on your own. That you need somebody else to validate your value, to validate your worth. That you need a degree, that you need a university to say you're smart. That you need a partner that's brilliant and attractive so that you can prove to everybody that you are actually worth it. But the thing about loneliness is that, unfortunately, Every, all of those things that we use to fill that void, to ease that loneliness, to calm it, they're nothing but a bandit. They're nothing but a little aspirin. And it's a little aspirin that we use to try to heal a cancer. A cancer that is killing you, that is killing me, that is killing so many people every year. Every year, suicide kills three times more people that homicide does, worldwide. And if you've been there, like I've been there, if you've been there in that point of your life where the void is so weak, 
so huge that you don't find a reason to leave anymore? If you know what I'm talking about, then you know how important this is. Because you see this boy, this thing is made out of the same thing that gave this belt. Or the same thing this matrix is built of the lie that tells you that loneliness is a thing. And I'm here to tell you the only reason loneliness exists, the only reason loneliness is a thing, is because we are disconnected with ourselves. Because we don't, we, we don't feel comfortable just going outside and sitting in solitude for a little while and listening to ourselves. Because we are live, we rush and we rush and we're fast, fast, fast. We always want to accomplish the next milestone in our life because that's what we to they told us we need. That's what they told us we need. So we keep on fighting for our partner, our perfect partner, and, and we're so codependent and we need it so much. We don't, what nobody told us was that we, what we really need is ourself. Since we were little, we took that, we took ourselves, we put it away, we locked it out, we treated it as it was something dangerous. Most of us, at least those of us who have experienced depression, and sadness, and anxiety, most of us have something in common, which is that we have taken that part of us and we have put it deep inside and locked it away because that's what society tells us that it's not okay. So we go around all our life looking for validation. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, if you're struggling with loneliness, if you're struggling with loneliness, listen to me. The first thing you need to know, well, actually the only thing you need to know, is that loneliness is not a thing. Just like darkness doesn't exist, darkness is only the absence of light, loneliness it's nothing but the absence of yourself. The thing about loneliness is that it can't be filled by anybody else. It cannot. Even if you have the best partner, even if you have the most beautiful family, even if you have everything you wish for, loneliness is embedded in us because it's formed of emptiness, of that void. And that void is made out of the same thing the Matrix is made out of. So if you want to stop feeling lonely, you need, you really need to get out of this Matrix. And the first thing we need to do to get out of this matrix is understand that we don't need anybody else. You see, they can take... The, the, the biggest paradox about it is that actually there's one thing that nobody can take away from you. Nobody. Like, they can take everything away from you. They, want, they can take you and put you in a little room and just get you away from everybody, everyone you love, take all your money away, your clothes, take everything, every privilege, everything from you. But even if you're in a tiny little cell, nobody can take yourself away. The weirdest thing and the biggest paradox of it all is that it's actually, for most of us, it's not even necessary. Most of us actually just gave it up on turn. Because we're so afraid of ourselves, because we are so afraid of not meeting the mold and not meeting the standards set for us. But I'm here to tell you that if you feel lonely, and if you feel guilty that you feel lonely because you have a lovely family, oh come on, be happy, you have all these reasons to be happy, and deep inside you know you feel lonely, deep inside you know you feel the void, then listen to me. Even if nobody tells you this, a lot of people feel lonely. A lot, a lot of people, if not most of them, feel the way you do. And we will keep feeling this way until we step out of the cave, until we step out of the matrix, until we understand that our loneliness is not a thing, that it's just made out from ideas. But like I told you, there's nothing more powerful than an idea. So powerful! So powerful that loneliness is nothing but an idea. An idea that moves the world. And an idea that controls a lot of us, our lives, our decisions. The reason why we can't, we can't overcome a lot of things. But the amazing thing about an idea is that it can be destroyed by another idea. So today I'm here to give you something to think about. All you need, all you need is yourself. And I know it's really hard. Every time I talk with 
people as a coach, uh, as a life coach, I see them when I talk about this, they, they resist to it. They don't feel comfortable when I tell you, well, why do you need, why do you need your boyfriend to think you're beautiful? Why do you think somebody else, why do you need somebody else to tell you you're smart? And the thing is, we need it because that's what the matrix is made of. Those are the thoughts that control our life, that control our mind. And the hardest thing about it is that we'll go looking that somebody else is going to make us stop feeling lonely. And all it causes, if you feel lonely now, and you find the love of your life, let me tell you, you're gonna ruin the relationship because you're gonna need them. No healthy relationship can be, can be founded upon need. It just doesn't work. And this is really important because we go, we humans go repeating the same patterns over and over and over again and we don't realize that we need to change our focus. And we go searching for happiness, like endless, like pursuing and pursuing and pursuing happiness, pursuing and pursuing and pursuing healing. And we don't realize that we just need to grab it, that the door is open. Please just exit. You don't need to have a super long process. You just need to wake up, open your eyes. You are enough. You are enough. The reason why I'm telling you this is because I lost so many years. I lost so many years and I lost people I loved so much. So this, what I'm telling you about, what I'm sharing with you, is actually the most expensive learning of my life. It's, it was really expensive for me to learn it because most of us, to, to come to this realization, we need to lose what we love, what we love the most. But sadly, Sadly, because we keep using them as a medicine. We keep using them as an aspirin. We keep using the people we love, our partners, our, our teachers, our, our, our daughter and son. We keep using everything as a band-aid. We keep using it as an aspirin to try to heal a cancer. But the cancer is this absence of us. The cancer is this absence of ourself. And the thing about it is, this is something that we believe. We are trained to believe that being proud of ourselves, that feeling self-sufficient, it's being self-centered and being selfish. And I, I was there for a long time. I, I love writing. I love writing and I do it good. <laughs> I'm so happy that I can say it now. I am a good writer, but all my life, I was so afraid of it. I, 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 I could never say I'm a good writer. I could never say it, never. So I had, when I had a partner, a romantic partner, I, I, I remember how, how much I needed the approval. And so I would write something and I would be like, can you look at it? Do you wanna edit it? And, and as they would edit it, I, I would be like, did you like it? And of course they loved me and they would be like, yes, it's beautiful. You're such a good writer. And then three days later, I would look at what I write. I would be like, ew, this is awful. This is so, no, too much, too intense, too this. And I would start, I would start using adjectives to just uh, undermine my work and undermine what I do. So I would run away, to my, I would run back again to my partner. And I would be like, I don't know, you know what? I just, I just realized that I'm not made to be a writer. I, this is not my thing. I can't like, what I write is just useless. And I would do that, so that person would start saying, no, you're such a good writer. And I was like, I'm just gonna erase it. I'm just gonna erase all of it. So that, so that my partner would be like, no, 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 please don't, please, please, please. Don't, this is actually really good. Don't erase it. If you don't erase it for yourself, then at least for me, don't erase it. And then I would get like this little dopamine, like click. <laughs> this dopamine of me saying, okay, I'm actually a good writer because they are telling me that I shouldn't erase it, you know? And when you lose it all, that's the hardest part. That a lot of times to leave the matrix, it takes for us to lose what we love the most, to lose everything sometimes. So when you face that moment where you don't have anybody else to grasp anymore, where you can grasp on your partner or your mom or your dad or, or your career and your, and that's the moment where you hit the bottom. And if you're watching this video and you are actually struggling with depression big time, 
and if you're wondering if life is worth living, and if you're stuck at this place that I know so well, this place where you're saying, please give me a reason. Please give me a reason to live. Please give me something that I can hold on to because I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna die, but I just don't wanna keep on living the way I'm living because I'm just surviving. If that's your case, if you are there where I was, this painful, painful place where you feel the void and you are the void, you're nothing but the void and loneliness is taking over and it doesn't matter if your partner is right there with you. It doesn't matter if your mom and dad are sitting at the table with you. It doesn't matter. You feel lonely and maybe you feel you're broken. Maybe you think you, maybe you have a, 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 a diagnosis of a mental condition because that's what people do. When we are human, they just give us a diagnosis for a mental condition. If that's you, I'm here to tell you, don't give up. There is a reason for you, and the reason is you. And all that that you're looking for is not far away. It's not far away. All these absences, all this emptiness is made out of. All this loneliness that's so painful is built upon. It's the absence of you. Just like darkness doesn't exist, there's no way darkness can exist if you turn on the light. That's a principle. Darkness cannot exist if you turn on the light. Loneliness cannot exist if you get out of the matrix. It doesn't exist. It can't. It literally can't. It can't survive outside the matrix. It can't survive if you go and sit on your own and look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself what nobody ever told you. That you are enough. That you are good enough. Because there, there came a, lot, a point in my life, and maybe in yours, and, and it was a painful moment in my life, but also one that I'm so grateful for, because I couldn't look anywhere else but to myself. And at that moment, I remember I, remember I, told, the, I told my therapist, my wonderful therapist, I told her, you know what, I feel so, I'm angry. I'm angry, I wish I was not myself. I wish I was my friend. And she was like, why do you want to be, like, you don't want to be yourself? You would like to be your friend instead? And I told her, yes. I mean, I'm a really good friend. I'm really cool. You know, my friends have a problem. They call me. I am hours with them. And I'm so good motivating them. I'm so good getting them out of their sadness or what, or their bad day and giving them advice that I can't follow. <laughs> so I, I told my therapist, I wish I was my friend. I was not myself. And that, I just left it there and then I was taking a shower and then it hit me. You know, one of those aha moments, one of those like epiphanies. And I was like, why can't I be my friend? <laughs> and the thing is, I, never, I have never considered that possibility. I never even considered it that it could be a possibility. But I, I, I was jealous of my friends because they got to have me, you know, like when they were be, feeling really sad, I would spend hours with them. And, and then I realized, why can't you, Carla? And, I, and this is what I'm... You're watching this video and let me ask you, why can't you be what you need? I mean, when I understood, and when I understood that, my life changed. My life changed dramatically because I understood, wow, I, I don't only get to be my friend, I get to be with me 24-7. What can I do for myself, what I do for my friends? Why, if I'm, I'm good at this, if I'm good at that, of course, to get to that point first, we need to get to the point where we understand that we're good for some things. And that's a matter for my video. But the thing is, you can be what you need. You can be self-sufficient. We have been trained to believe we can't. We have been trained to believe we need validation. We need somebody else to tell us we're brilliant, we're smart, we're interesting, we are good writers, we are whatever but i'm here to tell you that's a lie i'm here to tell you you're enough you're enough to yourself and on the day you will realize that and you will understand that it's just like turning on the light loneliness cannot exist anymore because loneliness is not a thing loneliness is a myth it's a myth that only exists within the matrix and on the day you step out of this matrix is gonna die the day i understood this was the day i stopped feeling lonely I stopped feeling anxious and that was the day I was healed. After so many years 
trying to get healed and trying to find a way to get rid of depression, anxiety, so many things. And then, boom, boom, I got it. Boom, I understood it. I can be my partner. I can be that what I need in my romantic partner. You know, poor, 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 poor partners, poor spouses, you know. We go to them all broken, hoping they will give us meaning, they will give us a reason, and they are like bending over backwards, like doing everything they can to help us feel not lonely. But the thing is, if you're in that situation, you're never gonna be able to, You, no matter what you do, you will never be able to make your spouse or your partner not feel lonely. It's impossible. It's impossible because that's a thing of them with themselves and all they need is themselves. So if you think that them taking a time to go away and being alone is selfish, I'll tell you what is selfish. Try to feel it. There's nothing more narcissistic in this world than trying to feel another human being's needs and trying to fix them. There's nothing more narcissistic. Though a lot of times we make it sound selfless, like, oh, I just want to help. I just want to help him because it's broken. It's just narcissism, it's just selfishness disguised as love and kindness. But, but if you are at the bottom, I have a good news for you. If you are desperate as you listen to this video, or if you have been severely depressed and really feeling not well, I have a good, good news for you. If you reach the bottom, you have two options, give up, or give yourself a chance to understand. Now that you've seen that the other life didn't work, give yourself a chance to see what life out of the matrix would be. So I'm here to challenge your idea about loneliness. I'm here to tell you that the void you feel, that uncomfortable sensation is your so telling you that you're much more than you're telling yourself you are. Because on the day I realized I didn't need anybody to tell me I'm a good writer. I like it. I like it. And that's good enough. That's good enough for me. Because you see, a lot of us are really like abstract in our thoughts and we think about things and think and think and think and think. And most of my life, people told me that my biggest problem in life was that I think too much. Then I understood that's not the problem. That's what I do best. Think. I'm a thinker. I think really deep things, but my problem was trying to think within the matrix. But on the day you say, on the day I stop hoping for somebody else to tell me that I'm good enough, <laughs> that day I started doing things. Because you see, there are some things that don't really, there's some people that don't really question it, you know? And they may not be as talented as you. <laughs> Perhaps you're super talented. Actually, some of the most Talented people are the most perfectionist people and then they don't, they, don't, they don't achieve anything. If that's you, if you feel like you're a waste of energy, a beautiful brain that's just wasted. Because you're so perfectionist that you always want to know, always want validation to know if you are good enough. If you're a good writer, if you're good for this, if you're good that. I want to tell you that a lot of people are not as talented as you are, but they don't care. That's crazy. That's, that's, that's the power of an idea right there. If you feel like you haven't accomplished more, much in your life, a lot of people with much less talent than you have. And you know why? Because they fill the void with themselves. And I want to tell you, if you fill that void with yourself, if you go and tell yourself, what loneliness, I'm just going gonna, gonna to turn on the light. If you turn on the light, the switch, if you go out of the cave, I can. I, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna tell you this. There's no way you won't be successful. You're afraid of failure. Well, then go out of the matrix, and you will see. There's no. You can't fail. You can't fail if you find yourself. You can't fail if you're true to yourself. Because then you don't need to try to become something. Then you don't need to try to 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 be the best. Whatever your degree or to have somebody tell you that you're good enough and then you can just unfold. It's very different than I am going to be the best writer than saying I think I can write and then unfold because you enjoy it. It's very different. 
living and acting out of fear or out of pleasure and enjoyment. So, loneliness, that's nothing. You're afraid of it? You are afraid of nothing. You are afraid of nothing. And you know why you're afraid of nothing? Because it's like being afraid of the dark when you have the light switch right there. Please don't be afraid of loneliness. And I know that's our biggest fear. That's why we stay with, with in marriages that are unhappy. A lot of people stay like that. That's why people stay in jobs that aren't happy, that don't make them happy, because that's what their family expects of them. That's what a lot of people pretend to be something they're not, because they're afraid their family won't love them. That's why a lot, that's why a lot of people in that experiment, they lift their hand and accepted the lie because it was better than being alone. But I'm telling you, if you are afraid of loneliness, it's just as stupid as being afraid of the dark when you can click and turn the light on. So tonight, I'm gonna challenge you to step out of the matrix and to face your void. Stop, don't be a coward. Don't be a coward. Step out of the matrix. It's got, is it gonna be painful? Yes, it's gonna be painful. Yes, I'm gonna tell you, it's super painful. It's not an easy thing to step out of the of the cave, to say goodbye to all everybody else who are collectively living a lie and an But, but on the day you will step out of the cave, you will stop surviving and you will start living. The biggest mistake we make in our relationships is that a lot of times we do that. We go and we want to find somebody who loves us. We want to love somebody. We're so desperate to find love before we love ourselves. We want to go marry somebody before we marry ourselves. And I'm going to tell you, if you marry somebody else before you marry yourself, that's doomed. Because we start in this relationship and they start well, but then they are unsustainable. Because there's, there, there's this belief that you need to find the other person to make you a whole. But one empty person and another empty person just makes a bigger one. So, if you want to step out of the matrix, if you want to beat your loneliness, if you want to confront that depression face to face, and if you want to give it a chance to the understanding that there's nothing more powerful than an idea. And that this jail, this jail is built out of ideas. We are in cages built out of ideas, built out of thoughts. And we don't talk about it because we're afraid. Nobody wants to talk about mental illness in the first person. Everybody, if we can talk about it if I have a psychologist, if I'm a psychiatrist, but nobody wants to say, oh, okay, I was mentally ill. Nobody wants to talk about it. But if you want to get out of this matrix, if you want to stop feeling lonely, you can do it. You can do it today. You don't need to wait 10 years down the road, 5 years down the road. You don't need to lose people you love. You don't need to go through that. If you have problems in your relationship because you are more codependent than you are interdependent, then maybe it's a good thing to say, hey, I love you so much. Let me find myself. Let's not talk for a month, let's not talk for two months and let me just go find myself. Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you really, really, you cannot love somebody if you don't love yourself first. You, if you marry somebody before you marry yourself, it's, it's not gonna work. You, or it, it might last because sadly for our society, the measure of our relationship working or not is length. But that's not, that's, that's one of the biggest lies of the, of the jail. No, that, no, it's not. No, it's not. What makes a relationship is how full and how happy and how much you don't need the other, but you still want to be with that person. There's nothing more wonderful than when you don't need somebody and you still choose them. There's nothing more beautiful than when you say, I don't need you, but I choose you. But if you are dreaming about choosing somebody, and you haven't chosen yourself, then there's something really, really bad. And it's just building a house that doesn't have a good foundation. It can look so pretty on the outside, but it's just not gonna last. So 
I'm here to tell you that if you feel lonely, probably the best idea is to actually go and be alone. And actually go and be alone, be on your own, spend time with yourself, listen to yourself before you can, before you even attempt to offer anything to anybody else. Well, if you've been so, if you've been here so far, thank you. <laughs> Again, thank you for listening. And uh, please, uh, if you haven't subscribed and you've been so here so far, <laughs> then it means you like this. So. Please subscribe and help me to keep on making videos and, and do what I am hoping to do with my life, which is talk about mental health in the first person and hopefully, hopefully remove the stigma about talking about mental health. Hopefully, if you will join me, talking about mental health, hopefully we will start humanizing it. Thank you.